For the last five years, I've been a front-end software engineer working in a number of companies from e-commerce to software as a service, and now currently I work at Twitter as a front-end web client engineer. Ever since I made the decision to become a software engineer, my life has changed in a lot of different ways, both good and some requiring a lot of growth. Becoming a software engineer gave me the financial freedom to take control of my own life. Things like not having to worry about where my rent will come from, how I'll feed myself and my dog, and how I'll be able to take care of my family is just one of the reasons that I chose to become a software engineer. I had a long held belief for a long time that I just wasn't good at software engineering. I had always liked computers and working with technology, but I felt like somehow software engineering just wasn't something I was capable of, that I just wasn't smart enough or that I just would never be able to get it. And it turns out that really anyone can learn to be a software engineer and the barrier to entry with being a software engineer is so low that really anyone can do it. The thing that I found most appealing about this career was the flexibility that it provided me. Here you can see that I'm getting my day started a little bit later than maybe most people would. And a lot of that changed too with um, the 2020 COVID pandemic. Basically before then, I was still working in an office. I was getting up every morning and rushing to get ready and get out the door and get to my office so I could sit there and work. And a lot of that time that I spent commuting, that I spent sitting in an office, was time that I could also spend at home. And what we all learned through the pandemic is that a lot of work can be done remotely, not all work, um, but even then with work that can be done remotely, there are trade-offs. So here, my wife and I, we chose to move to Dallas to be near my family. It's a big bonus. Um, the trade-off being that we no longer work in offices and our social lives are a little more limited to my family and our neighbors around us. That being said, I don't think I would ever go back to an office full time because it's much easier for me to focus and work from home than it is for me to work in an office where there's a lot of distractions. The other thing that I so love about working from home is that my wife and I take our time in the morning now. Instead of rushing, we actually take time to make breakfast, to look out the window, to enjoy the beautiful day that we have. I get time to connect with her and with my dog. And it also gives me time to do things that I want to do, like eating healthier, as well as making my own coffee at home just the way that I like it. Now, these are things that you could probably do if you worked in an office, but for me, I found that it's a little bit more uncomfortable. You know, trying to keep some of your things there. When I worked in an office, I had a, a tea mug and brewer and green tea leaves, and I would go looking for some hot water somewhere to make my tea with. And the whole process made me kind of look like an outlier compared to other people who would either get something that was ready made or would go out to get some tea or coffee. And it's just like these small little, I don't know what you call them, just micro grievances that kind of add up to where you're not always fully comfortable in an office. Here you can see that no one can see that I totally failed at doing latte art and it's totally fine. The other nice thing too is that I kind of get to take my day however I want and so my wife and I usually watch a little bit of YouTube before we get started with our day. Um, it kind of is more enjoyable for us to kind of relax in the morning, especially when we're both kind of still groggy, and then get started with our day. Now here's another benefit where because we're in Dallas uh, in Central Time, I get to actually start a little bit later in my day because this way I can connect with East Coast folks before they go to lunch and then I don't have to wait very long to connect with my West Coast co-workers um, who are just coming online around the same time. You know, the studio that I'm working in, this is another reason why we really wanted to, to buy a house and why I wanted a house in particular is I wanted to have my own kind of work room to work out of. You can see I've got some audio equipment there's the beginnings of some sound insulation going on the wall. Uh, this room to me is like my workspace, my my fortress, my, my man cave, I guess you could call it. But I feel like most people need an area that they can work in. My wife chooses to work in our bedroom because it has a really nice view and gets really wonderful natural light. 
And for me, while I would love to have natural light, the trade-off of having a completely isolated room is much better. The funny thing is, I actually got this keyboard because my wife could hear me typing on my keyboard before when we lived in a much smaller apartment. And then I got this keyboard with the silent toper switches on it and uh, I actually prefer it now over louder keyboards but it doesn't even matter because she's all the way across on the other side of the house. The other thing that's nice about having this room is that I'm able to go ahead and kind of work on whatever projects I want without any kind of fear of judgment or someone looking over my shoulder. I remember a lot of times when I worked in an office that I was always kind of worried about someone looking at my screen, what will they see, you know, if I happen to take a break to go look at, you know, a news site for a second or something. I would say the only thing I guess I miss are having some meetings in person. I feel like sometimes those are just a lot easier to do in person. One of the other really nice things about working remotely is I get to have lunch with my wife every day. Before, lunch with my wife was a really rare thing. We both worked in offices across town and we rarely saw each other for lunch. Usually we would see each other for dinner and the truth is that for both of us, we prefer having a bigger lunch and a smaller dinner. So this works out kind of nicely. Also, I just want to take a second to say I love this barbecue place. One thing about Texas, just the barbecue here is unreal. And this place, 407, what's so good about it, not just the brisket, but the sides. The veggies are so good. The Brussels sprouts, just incredible. The baked beans, the green beans, ugh, I'm getting like hungry just thinking about it. The other thing too is that traffic in general is not that bad out here since we live in a suburb outside of Dallas. Um, so we can usually get to lunch and back pretty quickly. You can see here I take a later lunch. We were gone for about an hour. Um, and usually on the West Coast, if you take a later lunch, you're kind of coming into meeting time. But because the West Coast is taking lunch around the time that I am, it works out fine. So now, of course, Tortellino is never gonna let me forget about his dinner. You know, this dog, this dog is like, I love this dog so much. This dog that, I've, I've had dogs my whole life, but really it was my family, my parents' responsibility instead of mine. And having this dog has really taught me a lot about responsibility and about training with dogs, but also I've just developed a bond to him that I don't feel like I've had with any other pet that I've ever had. He really feels like my dog. Sometimes I feel like we're like an old couple where like I just know, like I can hear him coming down the hall here and I realize that if, you know, he can't get to the door, I have to let him in. I don't know, it's a lot more fun having him around instead of just sitting here by ourselves. It makes it kind of difficult to travel, but we've been getting better about that and we found a boarding place that he seemed to like when we were gone in Hawaii. So, you know, one step at a time. So now at this point uh, in my day, this was a pretty heavy coding day and you can't tell just yet, but this was a pretty uh, frustrating feature to work on. I was working with a bunch of new technologies and new patterns that I was unfamiliar with. And so it took me a lot of time to actually get my feature working. And like sometimes with software engineering, like this is the biggest drag is like getting stuck and frustrated on something and you don't want to ask someone for help. And at the same time, you could ask someone for help and they might not be able to tell you what you need to do uh, or where to look. And so I'm just kind of sitting here getting kind of frustrated. At this point, it feels like it's like a syntax issue, just something like, you know, you forgot to dot your I or cross your T. And like, I'm just thinking I really need to ask for help at this point. 
Like sometimes I seriously sit there and I hold my face in my hands because it can be so frustrating doing software development. I think a friend put it once that people expect software engineers to literally move mountains because, well, we can. Like software lets you do such amazing things in the abstract world that is would take weeks, months, years to do with hardware. And that doesn't always mean it should be done with software, but having that ability does make it really easy to feel like software engineers are capable of so much and because of that puts a lot of expectations on what you're capable of doing. So in this case, I was actually able to get my code working. I kind of just did a little bit of trial and error, trying a couple of different options that I had. And I was working with a library, it's called Relay, it's state management for React, kind of like Redux. But once you kind of realize that it's all just an abstraction built on top of GraphQL, then it starts to make a lot more sense. So today, uh, I was really excited to finish my work too, because as you can see in the back there, I've got a mini PC. There's that little bit of blue tape. I was really excited to get to play with this a little later. So typically sign off around seven. Uh, and it looks really dark in my room, but actually it's still pretty bright out because of where we are in Dallas. And it's been getting like really hot lately. So because of that, we typically don't go for a walk until much later in the day. Here we're about an hour from sunset and normally it'd be pretty hot and humid, but actually today it was really nice. We can't always take the dog with us for walks during the day because he'll overheat. So today was nice enough he could actually go with us. You know, Dallas has been a really mixed bag for us, but we feel really blessed to live where we do. We have this amazing walking trail near us. And you can see even like from our house, there's all this greenery. You wouldn't know we're in Dallas. You'd think we were somewhere in like Lake Arrowhead or something in California, but it's just, it's so beautiful here. And life does move a lot slower here. So for us, we kind of move, I feel like kind of fast compared to everyone else. So since we eat out for lunch a lot, we'll typically make dinner and breakfast at home. Uh, breakfast at home almost every day, dinner, really just most days we make something light and small. We have all these bagels from Costco. We'll make these sometimes. Sometimes I'll make something else. You know, cooking is like a really fun activity, especially for software engineers, I feel, because you're following this recipe and you're seeing something come together and there's a bunch of things with technique and, you know, how do you, you know, make your food and the, the preparation, but after a long day of coding, it can be pretty exhausting to try to make dinner because it's just so mentally exhausting. And so days like today, a simple bagel will suffice. I think the other nice thing about working from home is the rituals that you can get into working from your own home. We have tea every single night uh, before going to bed and it helps us kind of wind down. The dog sits with us on the couch and it's like this familiar comfort that's really nice to have. I would definitely say our dog is spoiled, <laughs> but he gives us a lot of love in return. And he's pretty good whenever we have to leave him like with daycare, with boarding. He's he's not a brat. He is pretty, uh, pretty nice and not, uh, you know, crying and stuff like that. Sometimes he cries when we leave him home. So now this is where I get really excited because I get to use my little PC. I'm so excited about this. It took me like five hours to build that PC. Um, I'm running a 3090 FE in it. Like it's a monster gaming PC in such a small form factor. I just, I love how it came out. And you can see in the upper right corner, I'm like testing the thermals and stuff. It's, it's been a, a lot of fun, but also challenging to tune it. I'm gonna do another video about it pretty soon. Uh, I wanna talk about the build. So as you can see, Tortolino, he's been waiting for me to go to bed. He's even sitting next to me right now as I record this. Kind of the last thing that we always do here is just take him out because we don't want him to wake us up in the middle of the night. And then at this point, my wife has actually already gone to bed, so I'm just gonna very quietly brush my teeth and then go to bed. Thanks for watching my video, I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions about being a software engineer working remotely, uh, go ahead, leave a comment down below. If you wanna get more videos like this, please subscribe to my channel. Uh, and if you don't mind, please leave a like, it helps a whole lot. Thank you so much.